Hey guys and girls, I am Benjamin Dobell, the creator of Hemdel, the open source firmware flashing suite for Galaxy S series devices. So um, clearly I don't have a proper camera set up, I'm actually just standing here, leaning on a door, um, holding a Galaxy S3 in my hand, and I figured I don't have a proper setup. I can, you know, mount my Galaxy S to the wall or whatever and record myself and try and make it look professional, or I can just it and just lean on a wall and record myself because it's going to be regardless, maybe. So anyway, I'm the creator of uh, the open source firmware flashing suite for Samsung phones Hemdell, um, which includes Hemdell and Hemdell front end at the moment. Um, it's used to completely replace the firmware on Samsung devices. Um, it is similar to Odin, the tool that Samsung have developed and used internally, but that's actually leaked software, so obtaining it may not be totally legitimate, so you're probably, well, better off using Hemdo, which is open source software. It's freely licensed to you by me, obviously, so distribute it, whatever. Um, and the other advantage of Hemdell of Odin is, of course, that it runs on Windows, Linux, and OS X. Um, it's totally open source, so if you want to port it to another platform as well, go nuts. Um, yeah, it's also quite a bit simpler to use than Odin. Um, rather than having a zip file that you download and three tar, pa tar packages that you need to extract and then pick the right slot in Odin or whatever, um, it's a lot less scary. You just get one file, which is, c comes pre-compressed, you don't even have to extract anything. The file that you download from the internet is the file that you can flash. Um, and when you select that file, you get some information about the flash. Um, you get the name of the firmware, whatever the ROM developer has called it, um, the version of that particular firmware, um, the operating system, which is presumably Android, um, and then the version of Android, um, information about how you can donate to the developers, and of course, a list of devices that are actually supported by that firmware. So hopefully there's no more of this downloading a package, not really paying attention, flashing your device, oh crap, I bricked my device. Um, just when you select the package, what you really need to do is make sure your device is listed there. Um, that up or then it doesn't really matter. Your, your device is like, I won't even worry about you guys if you that up. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, what I'm going to do today is run through with you guys the process of obtaining a USB capture um, of flashing the device using Samsung keys. Now, I'm using Samsung keys here and not Odin because Samsung keys can be legit legitimately obtained from Samsung. Um, it only runs, well actually it runs on Windows and OS X, but for the purpose of this packet capture that I'm going to show you how to perform, um, you'll need to be running Windows. Um, you can use Odin, you can follow along using Odin if you have access to it, just Samsung, you can, uh, you know, keys you can obtain legitimately, so I'm going to recommend that. Um, incidentally, I'm also showing you a way to revert a device back to the latest stock firmware, firmware using Samsung keys, even if that device isn't running stock firmware. Um, so that might be of interest to you. Um, so basically, these packet captures, if you save them to your disk and then you're able to send them to me, what I'll be able to do is reverse engineer these packet captures and improve the support within Hemdell um, for those particular devices. There are some devices that support is limited, some devices just don't work altogether. Um, but if you guys can provide me with packet captures, if you guys flashing, then I can reverse engineer the, those packet captures much like I did for the first time I started writing Hemdell um, about two years ago when I just uh, only had a Galaxy S1, the GTI 9000, and I just looked at the ones and zeros flying past, reverse engineered it. Yeah, no, it's, it was crazy, and it took a while, and yeah, no, it's not just looking at ones and zeros, it starts to make sense after a while. Well, you go insane a little bit, and then it seems like it's making sense, and then you write some software and give it to people and hopefully don't brick their phones. I mean, I thoroughly test my stuff. Yeah, anyway, so um, I'm just going to show you guys um, how to perform packet capture. It's pretty bland, but if you guys want to contribute to the project and make sure your device is properly supported and you can use legitimate software to flash your phone using Linux, OS X, and Windows, please help out. So um, yeah, let's, let's dive into it. The first thing you'll need to do is 
take the back off your device um, and then remove the battery and under the battery there will be a Samsung sticker that has the model number in my case I'm going to be using an SGH i727 and also below perhaps below a barcode there will be a serial number which you'll also need um, I recommend writing that down um, I'm just going to put mine in notepad um, so I'll just write that down here and the serial number alright once you've got that um, what you want to do is put the battery back in the device and boot your device into download mode um, you may need to connect your device to the computer to do this um, depending on the particular device, some of them don't need to be plugged into USB port, some of them do. In this case, this phone needs to be plugged into the USB port. So what I'm doing right now is plugging it into the USB port and booting into download mode. Not that you can see that, but I am doing it. Alright, I'm now in download mode. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to detach it from the computer again. Um, that's actually a key step, so make sure that you do detach your device from the computer once you have it in download mode. Um, then we're going to open up Samsung Keys, which I've previously installed. Um, yep. And once it loads up, it takes a little while. No, not too long. Um, we're going to click the Tools menu up the top, and we're going to go to uh, firmware upgrade and initialization and we're going to enter the model name which we've just written down and you need to make sure that you enter it in all capitals and precisely how it's written on the sticker so I'm just going to copy and paste it and then once I've done that it's going to ask for the serial number which I've also got here I'm going to paste in now it's just confirmed that I can reinitialize this device um, which basically means restore it back to stock firmware um, so I'm going to click OK and that's going to tell me what firmware it's going to download, it's going to download the latest firmware for the device or latest official firmware for the device um, and I'm going to click OK obviously I can close my notepad down now, I don't need that or maybe I can't because the keys isn't allowing me to install and focus alright so it needs to download some things from Samsung before it can uh, flash the firmware. One of those things is obviously the firmware itself, but it also does some other downloading beforehand. Which is a bit odd, but it's just how Keys works. Alright, I'm close this notepad down now. And it'll probably ask you for admin permissions, just say yes. And waiting for keys. Alright, now it brings up um, some settings that it would like you to follow. Um, it actually tells you to boot your device into recovery mode. That's incorrect. Um, don't do that, it won't work. We've already got our device in download mode, and that is actually what you want your device to be in. Um, so, yes, you say, yes, I've read all of the above. Well, probably should read it, but then, yes, tick the box. Um, proceed without saving, otherwise we're just sending some information to Samsung, which we don't really need to do. Um, then it's going to ask us to connect the device, but before we do so, this is where we are actually going to set up our USB capture. Um, the software that I'm using to do so is a simple USB logger. I will include the link. Um, it's free software, um, and it's really quite simple. It's not open source, unfortunately, but it, it is free software, so anybody can use it and it's extremely simple to use. Okay, so now that I have this software open, I'm going to click this new document button up here, create a new monitoring session, and then it's asking us to plug in the device that we want to start monitoring. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug in the device that is already booted into download mode. I've already hit up on the device to say yes, I want to actually go into download mode, and I'm going to plug that in. Mm -hmm. Alright, you can see the capture has started straight away and it's just captured um, the basic setup um, between the computer and the USB device. It's not particularly important. Um, it's not actually the flashing procedure at all yet. Um, so then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Samsung Keys and we're going to hit Start Upgrade. 
Now this is going to download the firmware that's actually going to be flashed to the device, so this can take quite a while. Um, but once this is done, um, it will actually automatically start flashing the device. So you can walk away, the device is already in download mode, um, you're already capturing, so you don't need to sit here and wait for everything to download. You can go do whatever you want, you can keep using the computer even. Um, in my case, I'm just going to leave this open. Yes, the download is finished and we've now started flashing. As can be seen here, with the fact that we are getting transfers in our log. While that's flashing, we can have a look at the log. Play doesn't mean a lot to most of you, um, but this is basically Odin flashing, or keys, but it uses the Odin protocol. As can be seen here, where we initialize and the computer saying, Hi, I'm Odin. And the phone is saying, Hi, I'm Lockie, which is the uh, program that runs in the secondary bootloader um, that speaks to Odin. So basically, this will take a while because it'll be completely flashing your device. Um, I believe it's probably repartitioning too at the same time. Um, but it'll put your device back to stock, entirely back to stock, and you'll be running the latest official firmware for your device. So this is a good way to revert to stock, um, if you want to make sure you are definitely officially on the latest stock firmware. But of course, it, this is useful to me because you can provide me with these USB captures, and I'll be able to reverse engineer them, hopefully. The flash might seem to stall at some points, um, don't stress if it looks like it's stalled. Um, sometimes it just takes a while to write the files to the device, so you won't actually be seeing any USB activity and the progress files won't be moving, but the phone is still actually just writing files to its own memory, so it is fine, just be patient. Alright, so the flash is at 100% and the phone has rebooted automatically. Um, you can't see that, but you should be able to hear the Samsung jingle as it boots up for the first time. Oh, actually, before you see the uh, normal boot screen, you'll probably see some sort of a Android upgrade process taking place. Um, but once that's completed, the phone will boot up as usual, and you'll be running totally stock firmware, um, completely reset. Phone is booting up now. And there's the AT&T in this case, boot screen. Um, so now the phone has been fully flashed. Um, in which case the, as you can see on screen, saying the firmware, emergency recovery of firmware has completed. It wasn't really an emergency recovery in our case, but yeah, that's the general idea. So we can stop our log now because um, the flashing has already taken place and we don't care about any other logging that's going on between the device. So the way we do that is, well, we can hit pause capture here, um, which is what I am going to do. And then with that capture, um, what you want to do is save that to file. It's actually going to be quite large. Um, it's saved pretty much the whole transfer um, of all those files being sent from your computer onto the device. Um, I'm just going to save this to the desktop. Flash capture if I can type. Now what we can do is we can close this and I can close keys as well, we're no longer using keys. Um, and then as you can see I can open the file back up and see all the capture. So if you guys are able to email me those files, um, then I will hopefully be able to reverse engineer them and 
add support for more devices in, he in Hemdell. The way you can send me those captures um, is you'll probably have to upload them because they're quite large. You'll have to upload them to one of those free file hosting websites um, and send me the link uh, via email to service at glassechidna.com.au um, and if possible you can also go to GitHub um, the Hemdell project on GitHub and create an issue uh, to just let me know that you have uh, sent a file for that particular device that way other users will know that I have a capture for that device and they may not have to worry about doing so um, yeah hopefully using these I'll be able to add support for many more devices in Hemdell Wow, thanks for sticking around guys. I'm surprised that anyone is still watching the video at this point in time. Uh, USB capture is pretty boring stuff, but you know, if we want support in Hemdell for more devices, then um, if you guys are able to get a new USB capture and send those off to me, that would be great. And I'm sorry about the quality of the video and the strange screen tearing or whatever. Blame the Galaxy S3. Blame Samsung. Yeah, blame them. Not me. Send, send the hate mail to them. Um, yeah, thanks guys. Um, you might see more of me in the future.